Good morning, everyone. Gary Ryan here with you for our weekend wrap-up for the Fed League Flash. Um, again, I was at the game in uh, Binghamton last night, so if any of the other stats are wonky, um, I had to rely solely on the stats on the Fed webpage, so uh, bear with me on that. Um, you can feel free to comment down below if something was like, no, nope, that wasn't who did that. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. But anyway... All right, so last night started off, uh, first game, uh, Carolina finishing their Michigan road trip up, uh, up in Port Huron, and uh, they leave Michigan with six points, three to one win over the Prowlers. Uh, Jan Salak, he has been red hot lately, uh, last four games, he's just been on fire. Uh, he scores on the power play. Uh, Dalton J. Uh, he had the only... Uh, goal for the Prowlers for the night. Uh, Gus Ford ended up uh, chipping up at the po chipping at a power play goal, which was the game winning goal. Ford now has, I believe, eight game winning goals. So yeah, there's your definition of clutch. Um, and Jacob Schnapp ended up getting an empty nutter at the end of the game, and that was that. So yeah, Gus uh, a goal and assist. Uh, Jan Slack with a power play goal. And uh, Frankie McClendon in goal for the uh, excuse me for the uh, Thunderbirds, giving uh, Cavalier uh, a break, and he played very well. And this happened last year, I remember. Uh, McClendon started off the year not the greatest, and then he just got in a groove, and you know, he's back to his usual solid self. Uh, stops thirty-one of thirty-two. Um, um, Mikar Sokolov plays well, stopping 37 to 39, but it's not enough. Uh, yeah, Thunderbirds keep rolling on. They are 14 and 3 and in second place. Isn't that crazy? Um, good crowd, 1161 on hand. Uh, so yeah, Carolina improves to 14 and 3, Port Huron dropping to 7, 7 and 2 on the season. Um, in Elmira, somebody break up the River Sharks. They are red hot. After an eight-game losing streak, they have now won three in a row. And in pretty solid, convincing fashion, too. Uh, they uh, take on Danbury, spot them a lead, and then storm back and win. Um, so, yeah, 4-2 Elmira. Um, uh, Strasevsky ends up scoring the first goal for the Hattricks, and that was good to see him get back on the board. He's been kind of quiet lately, uh, but he's a good talent. Um, that was on the power play. Uh, Houston Wilson counters on the power play at 16-14. And uh, so then we had, uh, in between that, we had an unfortunate incident uh, Corey Cunningham ends up getting an ejection for kicking a player directly. Uh, there was a scramble in front. He ended up on his back. This part I did check, um, and uh, he ended up kicking somebody directly with his blade. Very dangerous play. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it was Gullo or Bernard or uh, Pickford that he kicked, but nonetheless, the referee said, that's it, you're done. Um, so that's going to be getting a suspension, I am sure, tomorrow. Um, anyway, uh, Dabrowski scores in the third early on. Danbury's back up. But, again, Elmira just storms back. Stephen Ford gets on the board uh, at the 11-minute mark. Uh, and then Luke Richards, he's back in an Elmira uniform. And he celebrates that by scoring the game-winning goal. And Elijah Wilson added an empty netter at the end of the game. So, uh, yeah, 4-2. to two, And uh, uh, McCollum, it was McCollum in goal for uh, Danbury. 22-25 in the saves and 58-03 played. Of course, he was pulled for the extra attacker, uh, which, you know, that, that's, that's a gamble. Um, Elijah Wilson... Uh, not Houston Wilson, but Elijah Wilson, he gets a goal and an assist. Um, you have Luke Richards um, with a game-winning goal. And uh, Sammy Bernard, he's been a good pickup for the uh, River Sharks. He stops 36-38 and looked very, very solid and comfortable doing so. 
So Danbury drops to eight, nine, and two, still third place. Elmira, they are right on the Watertown Wolves' heels now. Uh, six, nine, and one, just two points behind the Wolves. Uh, the Wolves ended up losing in Binghamton. And uh, this this was uh, kind of an interesting game, and I'm going to delve into this a little bit uh, again because I was there. One very important thing that I want to bring up with this game. So, um, yeah, the uh, scoring starts early for the Black Bears. Uh, 409 into the first, uh, Kirkby gets what would be the game-winning goal uh, on a, a beautiful game goal. Um, and it's just uh, the, the give part going to uh, Connor McAnanima, who uh, sent a pass from the goal line up to the blue line to hit a streak in Kirkby. Uh, so uh, beautiful play, and then uh, and then the back and forth in the offensive zone. Uh, so McAnanima, not only did he have a shutout last night, but he got an assist. So real nice night for him. Um, okay, Josh Fletcher scores uh, eight fourteen mark, and Olivieri scores in the power play at fifteen oh five. It was three uh, nothing. Second period was quite uneventful. A lot of shots, but. Uh, it, it kind of felt like there wasn't a whole lot of energy at that point in the game. And the third, things got really chippy, and this is what I want to talk about. Um, okay, Liam Anderson scores. Uh, it's 4 nothing, and the scoring is done. Despite the fact that uh, Josh Rosenberg uh, gave up the four goals, he played exceptionally well. Um, I was closer to the edge where... Uh, Binghamton shoots twice, so I got a real good look at Rosenvig, and he was making some just incredibly acrobatic saves. Um, had himself a real good game, and it's a shame when you see a goaltender play that well and get tagged with a loss, um, because uh, he was phenomenal. Um, 58 saves, obviously. Um, late in the game, uh, things start getting chippy. There's already been uh, a player rejection at this point for, uh, for some nasty goings on. Um, and then, uh, towards the end of the game, uh, it, the, it was ridiculous. Okay. Liam T, uh, 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 I'm sorry. Tate Leeson ends up tangling with Josh Fletcher. Um, I think Fletcher's nose is broken. Um, Leeson did not leave the ice in good shape. Uh, both of those players laid a pretty good beating on each other. But while that was going on, I was sitting directly across from the team benches. And uh, th this is the kind of thing that's got to be eliminated from the game. Okay, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. All right, you're frustrated. You're losing 4 uh, you know, You've got two players squaring off. I'm fine with that. But when the scrap happened, Coach Verbeek for the Wolves wanted to send his players out. He started whacking players on the back uh, backs and saying, go, go, go. So he wanted to start a line brawl. Now, uh, Sherwood, Coach Sherwood, caught him. And fortunately, I got to give props. The Wolves players, they're getting slapped in the back and told to go. And they acted like, what? They hesitated, and that hesitation saved the situation from uh, devolving to a really nasty situation. So kudos to you Watertown Wolves players who thought better of the situation and uh, used your heads. Um, Anti-kudos goes to Verbeek. Come on. I don't know if you know Verbeek had a wedgie or somebody put sand in his lunch or, or what, but... He was terrible. The whole it was like it was like watching Mike Keenan over there. Um, terrible, terrible coaching. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And I hope the league looks at that and uh, has a few uh, words for Mister Verbeek. Um, respect the heck out of the players, but that's not coaching. Okay. So anyway, the game ends up it's four nothing, and uh, Macanama gets his donut. Um, as we see, there was a couple of donuts last night. So, um, <laughs> you know, we went through uh, ten, uh, 10 weeks with only one shutout in the league. And then last night we had two. 
So yeah, in that other no-no, this time it goes to who else? Brendan Colgan. He only got seven last year. Um, so yeah, the Columbus River Dragons end up topping the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Same score, four nothing. Um, Cody Lickline and Ryan Hunter, they're all the scoring. Both end up with two goals. Uh, Wickline also adds an assist. So he had himself a real nice game. Uh, both of those players scoring once in the power play, once on even strength. Uh, Connor Green, um, after getting his his shutout yesterday, uh, or the, the previous day, excuse me, in Baton Rouge, um, now he's on the the other end of the uh, of the goose egg, and uh, he gives up four goals, but it's not a it's not a horrendous to, uh, performance, and he still made twenty four saves. Um, Colgan stops twenty two of twenty two, so um, yeah, that's the really weird thing is yeah yeah anyway, uh, both goaltenders who got the no no you know faced less than twenty five shots. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Green gets tagged with a loss. Uh, 3,900 on hand in Columbus. That was the biggest crowd of the night. Uh, so nice to see the fans come out. Um, so Blue Ridge falls to 5, 11, and 2. Columbus now 13, 1, and 2. Um, I, I know that a lot of people will say, well, yeah, but they're 0-2 versus teams with a winning record. Well, there's only four teams in the league with a winning record. Um, yeah, uh, four out of 11 have a 500 winning percentage or better. Everybody else is under 500. So uh, last game, we uh, traveled to Mississippi. They take care of business. They stop their losing streak. Uh, defeating the Zydeco 7-3. Zydeco now lost two in a row after uh, climbing up in the standings a little bit. Uh, crowd of 2,800 plus on hand. Um, yeah, Greg Hussey did not have a good game. Um, yeah, he had been on fire, and uh, I guess you know that, that was the end of the streak for him. Um, it was good to see uh, Anthony D'Aloisio for the uh, for the Seawolves, get back and play well after a poor outing. Um, you know, the last outing being poor wasn't all on him. He got hung out and dry. Uh, but last night, you know, he was uh, pretty solid in that for the Seawolves. Uh, so Danny Lissio, he opens the scoring for Mississippi. He'd end up getting two goals on the night, actually. Uh, Akeem Nilsson, he gets a goal. Uh, Larry Akos gets two goals. You get a goal. You get a goal. Uh, yeah, this is a typical Mississippi game. Um, yeah, it's the Oprah effect. Uh, Lissio scores again, and then Hugo Koch adds a uh, goal at 3.42nd of the second, and that is it for Hussey. His night is done. He ends up uh, saving just 16-21, to 21, and uh, he is spelled by uh, William Lavalier. And uh, Lavalier... Pretty pretty decent. He's uh, making the most of his uh, two game uh, or his four game PTO. Um, Don Carter Jr. He ends up breaking the uh, the shutout bid. Uh, gets Matt Rouge on the board. Larry Akko scores again early in the third. Uh, Adamo Asline uh, he scores at one fifty five. His brother David ends up getting the scrap. Uh, Hugo Koch scores again at three forty. And closing out the scoring, Noah Robinson with power play goal 13-14 for the Zydeco. But by then, the game had long been decided, and it's a 7-3 victory for the Seawolves. So they improved to 8-10-1. They leapfrogged back over Port Huron. Port Huron, of course, only played the one game this weekend. Uh, Baton Rouge, 5-13-1. Um, now they lost their last two Great, and uh, but they're still uh, they're, they're tied in points with uh, with the Blue Ridge Bobcats, but technically Baton Rouge is the fifth place team uh, because of one more regulation win. Um, the standings on the Fed page are wrong. Surprise, surprise. Um, so anyway, that's what I tell people: get your information from a bunch of different sources, and you can figure out what what's real and what's not. 
So that's our night. Um, tomorrow we will have stats and standings. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, we got uh, a bunch of games this weekend. Until then, have yourselves a good week. Remember, just uh, six more days till Festivus.